Hello there, I'm your host Dan Rojas. And I'm Denise Rojas, and welcome to Green Power Science. Today we are going to be letting you in on a little secret that we've known for several years. The fact is, all linear lenses from projector TVs are actually spot lenses. Linear lenses for projection TVs are not continuous linear lenses with lines running all the way across them that makes up the Fresnel patterns. They have a circle pattern very similar to a spot lens. What makes them different is the front side of the lens. A true spot lens is smooth on one side, whereas a linear lens has very fine lines that run down the front side of it. In this video, we're going to be showing you different ways of converting a linear lens to a spot lens. The first way is to put a resin on the front. This is a linear lens. You can see it in the outer portion here. And if you look right here, this area is nice and clear. <laughs> this lens has resin put on the front that fills the grooves. The resin sticks to the grooves, fills it in, and then by having a nice flat surface, you end up with a spot lens. Second way to do it is to spray a clear gloss spray all over the lens. You want to do this on the front side. This requires a little bit of skill because if you do it wrong or if the humidity is not correct, then you end up with a fogged up lens and it's really difficult to take care of that. What we're going to be doing in this video today is show you how to sand those lines out of the front side, then progressively remove the sand marks and finish off with a nice buffing. This can give you a crystal clear lens assuming that the lens is the right candidate for this. Simple test you can do to see if the lens that is linear can be converted into a spot is to put a little oil on the front side. We're going to be using WD-40. So this is a linear lens and I have the Fresnel rings facing the camera. You do not want to spray oil on this side because it will take a lot to get it out. On the smooth side of the lens, or the side that's normally smooth for a spot Fresnel lens, we're going to take a little bit of WD-40 and spray it on there and then rub it around. With your hands? That, works, with, that what, works best? So take your fingers, rub it around. If you want to use a glove, you can. This area here is linear and then when we come here, this area has a spot to it. I'll give me a close-up of how that looks linear spot. So this is what you want to look for. If your lens does this, when you spray a little oil on it, then you have a lens that's worth the time to do it. If you have a lens that you spray with oil and it doesn't change, it looks kind of the same or it has the same fogginess, not worth wasting the time on. In future videos, we're going to be revealing a list of all the best lenses to get, including spots and linears that are buffable. Over the years, Dan and I have collected thousands and thousands of lenses, and we probably have every type and style you could ever imagine. Most of those lenses you saw are not good for solar applications. We're using them for lighting applications, studio type lighting. We did a video on that, the link's below. So we're going to be getting started right now on buffing the linear pattern off of this lens. What we have is progressive grit sandpaper. It can be used for wet sanding. We're going to be starting with the 500 grit. We're not going to be using the 220 on this. You want to just put a light scratch along it. Since the lines run vertical, you want to go across them that way. The first step you want to do is clean the lens. This is something called Totally Awesome. and Because it is totally awesome. You get it at the dollar <laughs> store. It'll pick up all the dirt and grime. So just use a soft old t-shirt or something for this. You want to get it all the way off and once you have it, leave a little bit of the residue on and you're going to take just a little bit of water and put it on. We're going to be wet sanding this by hand. So what Denise is doing is she's going back and forth because the linear lines run this way. You want to try to avoid getting water towards the edges because this will leach around to the back side and get inside of your Fresnel pattern. It's not a big deal if it gets on the back side into the Fresnel pattern, but it can be kind of a pain to clean off, so try to keep it on the front side. You want to do the entire lens and work especially good on the edges. Depending on the lens that you're using, this 
whole process can take anywhere from 30 minutes to three or four hours. So it depends on a lot of factors. It depends on climate. It depends on the type of lens that you have. This is something called micro mesh. It is little sanding pieces that go from 1500 all the way up to 12,000. You can jump ahead at this step if you want and try to use something that is used for car headlights. This is really just a car polish more or less with a very heavy grit. There is also plastic polish that works well too. I found that jumping ahead actually takes more time. So what we're going to do is we're going to do first the 3200, then the 6000 and we're going to stop there. Take it outside and we're going to hit it with a buffer. I'm going to put a little bit of the surfactant on there. When you go to the finer meshes, you want to go in a circular pattern. You don't want to do this on the Fresnel side. You do it on the Fresnel side and it's game over for the lens. It's pretty much done. Try to keep the water at a good consistency. And once you get it kind of dried off, then you can go ahead and work the edges. If you run the micro mesh or the sandpaper vertical with the lines, you're not going to be doing much, so you want to go across or in a circular pattern. It's a little workout. It's a good workout. Whew. We're doing the 3200 right now. By stepping up with the different sandpapers, it takes longer as opposed to just jumping to buffing, but it will save you so much time in the long run. We're up to 8,000 now. What this does, you're not going to hear much. It's not going to have the same sound that it had with a thicker grit. These pads will hold up for about three or four lenses. If you're just doing one, this is a great option. I'm going to go ahead and wipe this down and we're going to show you where we're at so far. With the micro mesh, this is what we've gotten so far. It looks pretty good. This will actually work in the sun. We're going to take this outside and we are going to buff the crap out of it. For this next step, you can use a variety of different products. There's Plastex, which is designed for headlight cleaning. There's Lens Clarifier. I have a metal polish. I've got turtle wax, and in the back is just regular gray rubbing compound. This buffer is a regular buffer I got at Harbor Freight. I also have WD-40. You definitely want to wear eye protection, and you also want to wear a respirator mask. Be very careful when you use a buffer because it travels at a high speed that gets tangled up in your shirt or anything. can definitely cause a lot of bodily injury. Also, wear something to cover your hair and your clothes. Wash them afterwards because you're going to get a lot of little debris on there that you don't want to breathe in. I've got the Fresnel side down. I'm going to be taking clamps, clamping one corner to the cardboard and the other corner I'm clamping to a pallet. This is my table saw right here. I'm going to be using a coarser compound for this. Once you've worked the compound in, a little secret is to put a little WD-40 on there. Not much. This will give it more friction, believe it or not. Even though it's a lubricant, it will cause your pad to stick and create heat. Be careful because it's going to want to kick back on you, so you want to use a lot of strength to hold the buffer. So once you finish that side, I actually did the whole thing. You want to turn it around because you have to hit the areas where the clamps were. If there's any tape or black residue stuck from the lens, from the where the lenticular was attached, definitely make sure you get that off. You can use WD-40 to buff that out. And the reason you want to get all the dirt off is that stuff will really mess you up at this point.
What's gonna happen is your buffer, your buffing pad, this one's made out of wool, is gonna get a little cogged down with stuff. So you can clean it using a cement corner or a cement block. Just be careful that you do this the right way. Hold it very tightly. Don't let it fly back on you. Once you do that, take your buffer, put it on high. You want to let it free spin. This will knock loose any of the dirt. We're ready for the headlight cleaner. So what you want to do is take the little pad that comes with the headlight cleaner, put some on there, rub it around, and you want it to get kind of dry, almost like you would do car waxing. So now I'm going to use this plastic stuff to put on there. Remember to keep rotating your lens, that way the clamp area gets buffed. Be very cautious when you work by the edge. You don't want the buffer coming into the edge because it can lift your lens up, crack it, throw broken pieces of plastic at you. So you want to tilt it down where it's angling out the whole time. For the final step, I like to use an inexpensive car wax if you did everything correctly you should have a nice clear spot for now lens from a linear lens that will have a very very powerful focal point the front side of this the non Fresnel side should be smooth it shouldn't have that rough feeling like it had before if you happen to get a little bit of the compound on the back, you wanna spray the entire back, the Fresnel side with the awesome, hose it out real good. If you do wipe this, it's like a record. You wanna work in a circular motion. Do not go across the Fresnel rings or you will mess them up. Do not buff the Fresnel side. If your lens happens to be a dull, foggy lens, then that's just the way it's gonna be if that test does not perform for you. A lot of videos on YouTube have mentioned different brands of TVs and lenses. Those are okay lenses. They're all pretty much not the correct one to use for solar applications. They will work, but I've yet to see a video that shows you the right TV to select from. In future videos, Denise and I are going to be showing you a list of all the TVs we collected and show you the best spots and also the best linears that work for this buffing application. You're gonna be telling everybody all your secrets. All the secrets are coming out because these lenses you are- You better not tell anybody though. If we tell you, you keep it to yourself. You can share it, it's fine. It's oh. open source stuff. Okay. These lenses, like the ones that I, like the one that I just buffed, are almost impossible to find now. So this is gonna save you a lot of time doing what other people tell you where you go on Craigslist, you pick up a lens and it's like, ugh. Well, that didn't work out. Then you end up with a whole bunch of junk that you have to pay $35 or $40 to dispose of properly. Not necessarily a good thing to do. So this is gonna save you a lot of time. It looks great. Little secret, the best lenses that will be used for solar are not the high definition 16 by nine ratio. They're not the wide ones like we have over here. They are the four by three ratio like a standard TV. For Fresnel lenses, for solar applications, the older the TV, the better results you're gonna get. This lens is probably 15 to 25 years old. So with the little elbow grease, this is how you convert a linear lens to a beautiful spot lens. Be sure to comment, and if you like the video, like it. Subscribe to our channel. Check us out on Twitter. The link is somewhere down there, and also, like us on Facebook. We will have a lot of different things on our website, greenpowerscience.com. We're going to be writing some articles that be easier to understand through writing versus a video. I'm your host, Dan Rojas. I'm Denise Rojas. Thank you for watching and enjoy our videos. Mm -hmm.